Recently, studies have shown that the number of parents delaying or refusing vaccinations for their kids has spiked. The trend has medical professionals worried. Joining us this morning to talk more about the issue is pediatrician Raj Naik. And good morning, Dr. Naik. Good morning. I guess, you know, first question I have is why do you think parents are delaying and refusing vaccinations? Well, there are a number of reasons, and it's been a trend um, over the last several years, but I think it's great that we live in the information age that, uh, you know, we have uh, access to all kinds of information, and uh, a lot of times that works to our advantage, but there's a downside to that, and that's that if uh, people say things enough, and uh, whether that information is true or not, there's a perception that that, tr that becomes the truth, and um, there's been a, a vocal minority about vaccines or about concerns about vaccines. And they've been very vocal, spreading a lot of misinformation. And we all have access to that. And there's a perception that those myths actually become truths. And so those of us that take care of children need to be more effective in our messages about the real scientific truths about vaccines. So has there been any scientific truths that vaccines do cause harmful side effects? No, you know, there are risks to everything that we do in medicine, but the risks of the vaccines are actually very minimal. And I like to talk to parents about true risks and true benefits of the vaccines based on what we actually know scientifically. And I would break it down um, into the benefits into three major categories. The, the first major benefit is that the vaccines that we use in our routine childhood immunizations, they save lives. And we can quantitate the number of lives we save because we can just look at these diseases in the pre-vaccine era and the post-vaccine era, and it's uh, pretty overwhelming, the number of just true lives that we save. In fact, we save 13 to 14,000 kids' lives every single year through our routine childhood vaccines. And the second thing that I look at in terms of major benefits is that we save quality of lives. So not only are children not dying from these diseases, but they're not suffering the consequences of uh, the complications of these diseases. For example, children aren't uh, being paralyzed by polio. Uh, they're not um, suffering from hearing loss and, uh, and uh, uh, damage to their brain from meningitis. They're not uh, suffering sterility from mumps. There's a number of quality of life issues. And then the third major benefit is that it, it's cost-effective medicine. That's especially uh, important these days. But there are more recent vaccines, for example, the rotavirus vaccine that caused lots and lots of hospitalizations. We've reduced that by 85% within just a few years. So they're uh, saving lives, they're saving quality of life, and they're very cost-effective medicine. Now, if you flip on the risks, the risks are actually pretty minimal. And the way I like to put this into perspective is that uh, you know, the, there are no children that have died from the vaccines in the last several years. The most severe problem that could happen would be a severe allergic reaction, and it's exceedingly rare. Um, and as I noted, no children have died in the last several years from any vaccine. Um, to put that in perspective, there's about 100 people that die every year in this country from lightning strikes and about 250 people that die in, in bath-related accidents. Uh, I like to give that perspective. People are not usually afraid of going outside for fear of being struck by lightning. Uh, uh, the risk of, of dying uh, from a lightning strike is about 100-fold or more greater than uh, risk of the vaccine. All right, Dr. Raj, thank you so much for joining us this morning. You gave us some important things to think about.